the parts of our Bernina 330 sewing machine at school. All sewing machines have similar parts. If it is not a computerized one, it might have some, not have some of the computerized portions, but most sewing machines will have these parts. We're going to go through and name each part. On your assignment sheet, there is a chart. You need to go and find the definition that the part is describing and then type the name of the part beside it. Our first sewing machine part is here on the top near the back of your machine. It is this little metal hook. It's called the thread guide. It literally guides the thread through the machine. There are several thread guides, but this one's the first place you take the thread when you are threading the machine and is probably the most important of those thread guides. You have to make sure the thread actually comes up underneath this hook. On your chart, this happens to be number 15. Just make sure down on number 15 you write thread guide. Tension disc is our next one. Right here on the top of the machine, slightly forward from our thread guide, is this slit. And inside the slit is this little piece of metal. This little piece of metal, if you could rub it with your finger, would move back and forth. It is the tension disc. It controls the top tension, or the how hard it is for the machine to pull the top thread through the machine. When you sew, that little metal disc will actually clamp together on the thread because the thread comes through there and make it a little bit harder for the machine to pull it through. That way the thread is nice, firm, and controlled instead of flopping all over the place. This one happens to be number 10 on your chart. Please make sure you read your definitions carefully as the next one is number 11. Number 11 is this gray dial beside the tension disc and it changes the top tension. It controls how hard the tension disc clamps down on the thread. Or how easy. For our machines, this red line should line up with this gray dot. That is normal. We're using normal threads. We need a normal tension. Anything else and it causes problems. Okay, so that one was number 11 on your chart. From this point on, I am not going to say the numbers on the chart, just read your answers carefully and select the right one. Display screen. Right here in the center of your machine is an electronic screen that displays and shows the current settings and other stitch information. For example, this column here from 0 to 5 is your stitch length. That's how far the needle jumps every time it stitches. This from 0 to 5 here says how wide. From side to side, is the thread going to, is the needle going to jump from side to side and so zigzag? This bar with the light in the middle shows you your needle position. It says, hey, the needle's right now in center, or I can move it to the right or to the left, so it's not sewing right in center. This is a number one, which says we are using stitch number one on the sewing machine. If you look over here in my example, it says number two. Number two is a zigzag, and number one is a straight stitch. Right here, it tells you what kind of presser foot you need. Different stitches need different feet. This is saying, hey, stitch number one needs a normal, basic number one presser foot, the normal universal one. This right here tells our machines are smart. It tells you whether the needle is going to stop always in the air whenever you stop sewing or you can change the arrows so it points down it will tell you that it always points down when you're stitching like if you lift up the press foot stop sewing the needle would be down in the fabric and in the course of around here different icons will pop up telling you what is going on and other stitch information so the stitch width i mentioned controlling how far the needle will jump from side to side is controlled by these two buttons. If you push the down arrow, your zigzag will get closer together. If it's at zero, it would be a straight stitch. If you click the right hand arrow, it will go wider until you're really doing a full on zigzag motion. You can customize your zigzag with this button. 
Coming over to the right on the top of my machine, we've got this angled peg and this straight up peg. This is your bobbin winder. You put your empty bobbin on top of here to wind thread around it in the first place. You click this over. Please note that this should only be used when we are actually winding a bobbin. A lot of students find it fun to click that lever over and have it wind without anything there that wears down the parts of the machine. Next part of the machine is our spool pin. Up to the top right, this actually swivels down and up. If it's up, we can put a spool thread on it and it will hold it to keep it steady while you sew. And then it must be lowered, swiveled down before you put away the sewing machine because the sewing machine is on a shelf drawer. It slides under the table. If this is sticking up, it will pop off when it gets hit. Please note we do have a horizontal spool pin on our machines. Your home sewing machine might have one of these. If you use these, that's fine. Just make sure you put the cap on the end so the spool doesn't fly off. We use these ones at school so that gravity keeps the spool on the spool pin. Needle position back here in the center. The second set of buttons down is our needle position button. The one that says, hey needle, you should be right in the center, or hey, come clear over here to the left and stitch over here, or hey, come clear over here to the right and stitch here. Please note, you will only need to change the needle position to the right or to the left if you are doing anything like zippers, because we change our presser foot and a piece of metal appears in the middle, or if you are doing some kind of edge stitching with a different presser foot. Usually you move the needle with a different foot. It should be in the center if you do a zigzag though, because if it's not in the center, it will jump from side to side and actually hit the metal presser foot and break the needle. It needs to start in the center for a zigzag. Stitch length. The next button down here, the down arrow makes your stitches shorter and closer together. The up arrow makes the stitches longer and farther apart. That was this column right here. Just note, if you're at zero, your needle is going up and down in the exact same spot. It will not be moving at all across your fabric. That will tie a knot, and if you leave it there for long enough, it will tie a big enough knot that it might tie to your machine. 2.5 millimeters is our regulation stitch length, the most secure normal stitch length, unless we have to have it a little bit smaller to be tighter. Just note, if you bring your stitches closer together, it's harder to seam rip them. They become basically permanent. So if you make any mistakes, it's done. If you bring your length longer, your stitches become farther apart, a little bit less secure, but easier to remove. For example, if I don't know that a pair of pants I'm sewing is going to fit, I could make it a really long stitch here. We call it a basting stitch and sew it, try it on and go, oh no, this doesn't fit. Quickly be able to remove those stitches and try again. Now over here on the right of your sewing machine, there is this white circle. Please note these arrows are going the wrong direction. Oh my goodness. You will always spin your hand wheel, this circle, towards you always towards you, not the direction of these arrows, because the machine needle will go up and down when you spin this. If you spin it the wrong way, the needle will actually miss the bobbin thread and will not form a stitch. And then that thread has nowhere to go but tie knots in your machine. You must spin your hand wheel towards you so the needle will go down and catch the bobbin thread where it's supposed to and prevent thread issues. Stitch selector. This number pad set of buttons here selects different stitches on your machine. For example, if we click number one, we get a straight stitch. If we click number two, our display screen changes to a two, and we have a zigzag, a pre-selected width and length for our zigzag, pretty standard zigzag. 
Number four is called serpentine, where instead of just jumping from side to side, it will stitch one, two, three, turn one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, back and forth, back and forth, across there. This one is a stretch stitch for sewing with knits. This one is your buttonhole, etc., and so forth. All machines should come with information explaining what each of these are and how to use them. Please note our school machines are programmed with 40 different stitches. If you want to do a two digit number, you click the number sign or the pound sign. So I'd click it and then I'd go one, two, and then 12 would show up on my display screen and I'd be able to do stitch 12. Clear should send you back to one or at least reset the settings for your current stitch. The power switch is here on the side of your machine. It doesn't show up in this picture, but if you look at the side, there it is, right above the power cord. Allows you to turn the machine on or off. Please note in our class, you do not need to worry about this and please don't mess with this. This is where your foot pedal will plug in. And this is called your feed dog drop. I'll explain that more when we get to the feed dogs. And here's your spill pin when it's swiveled it down. Okay, your foot pedal tells the machine to sew, and you control it with your foot. So this wedge goes on the floor and acts like the gas pedal of a car, which means as you push harder with your foot, it will go faster. Only sew as fast as you can control the machine. Slower without mistakes is better than fast with lots of mistakes. Okay, the bobbin, these little metal circles, have thread round around the inside here. These ones are empty. And these go into the bottom of your sewing machine. Your machine needs thread on top and on bottom to complete a stitch. Bobbin case. The bobbin case holds the bobbin in the machine. It actually will lock the bobbin in the machine and controls the bottom tension. How hard it is for the machine to pull that bottom thread up through the machine as well. Please note, this right here, at least on the school machines, is a lever that if you pull up on it, allows you to unlock the bobbin case from the machine and pull it out again. Needle up, needle down button is right here below your display screen. If you push and hold this, it will send the needle either up to the absolute top or down to the absolute bottom exactly. So there's no guesswork with the hand wheel to know the needles all the way up or all the way down. This is very useful for an automatic needle winder or just general threading. Down to the left from the needle up, needle down button, it would be right here, is our back stitch button. It's a U-turn shape button. Your machine is set to pull fabric from in front to the back automatically. That's just the way it pulls fabric through. If you push this button while you are holding it, the machine will go the other way and instead bring fabric from the back to the front. We use this at the beginning and end of our row of stitching to sew a knot. If you sew in the same exact spot, two or three stitches, it basically ends up as a knot. So we back stitch at the beginning and the end to secure our stitches. Needle clamp screw. Right here on our sewing machines is a black screw. Right here, right above the needle. If you tighten it or loosen it, you can remove the needle or screw the needle in. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So if I'm spinning it away from me, it would be to the right. If I'm spinning it toward me, it would be loose. If I spin it loose, the needle will fall down. If I put the needle up in and then I screw it tight, it will tighten the needle in place holding it steady for sewing. Please make sure the needle is always all the way at the top when you insert a new needle. The needle, of course, is that sharp piece of metal with a hole down here for the thread to go through. It pierces the fabric and carries the top thread through to create a stitch. Pierces the fabric, goes down, hooks on the bottom thread, and then comes back up to create a full stitch. Feed dogs. Feed dogs are these two 
rows of rough metal underneath your press foot, underneath the needle. They are the part that actually grabs the fabric and pulls it through. So what they do is they kind of come up, grab fabric, pull it back, go down, come forward, grab more, and they just kind of come up and down pulling the fabric through the machine. They pull the fabric through the machine, which means you should not be forcing, pushing, or pulling the fabric through. Let the feed dogs pull it through. If the feed dogs are allowed to do their job, it controls the length of your stitches exactly to the length that you programmed up here and allows the speed to work accurately with your foot pedal. The feed dog drop actually will drop these down so they are below this metal plate and they cannot reach and grab fabric at all. That would force you to sew in the same spot. Your fabric would not be able to go back or forth. Stitch plate. This rectangle piece of metal is your stitch plate, sometimes called the throat plate. These are where our seam allowance guidelines are found. Each of these grooves is one eighth of an inch apart. They start measuring from where the needle is in the center. And it's labeled on here, even though you can't tell where three eighths is and five eighths. The other lines you can figure out because you know they're one eighth of an inch apart. You're going to keep the edge of your fabric always lined up with the edge of the line for the stitch length that you want, your stitch seam allowance that you want, so that you get a nice even distance from the edge of the fabric to the needle the entire length of your project. That is the number one key to good sewing. Lining up with the correct line and staying there. You'll guide your fabric slightly from side to side to make sure it stays on the line. The presser foot itself. The presser foot is this kind of chicken foot looking thing. Its job is literally to come down. You put your fabric in this gap, you put it down, and it presses firmly down on the fabric to help the feed dogs be able to pull the fabric through evenly. If the fabric is floating in here and your feed dogs try to pull the fabric through, your fabric is just going to bounce up and down through here. If the press foot comes down, it holds it nice and steady so the feed dogs can get a good grip and pull it through evenly. Please note on our machines, this lever here, if you push up on it, will allow the press foot to fall down and you could replace it with a different one. Our next piece is on our sewing machine, but it might not be on a sewing machine at home. Depends on your machine. This little gray lever above the needle and the presser foot here is the automatic needle threader. If you pull it down, it sends a little piece of metal up through the eye of the needle that you can put your thread on, and then when you let go of it, it will pull the thread through the eye of your needle, automatically threading it for you. So you do not need to see that little hole and try to get the thread through it. Please note, if you are going to use these, you must always use the needle up, needle down button first. That needle must be at the absolute top so that that little piece of metal, when it comes through, it will actually go through the eye of the needle. If that needle is even off by the tiniest bit, that piece of metal will hit it and break. And to fix that, it's about 40 bucks. So if it breaks at school, I do not fix them. You just have to live with a broken one. But please don't break them if they actually work. On the side of your machine here is a little shell shape. If you bring your thread up through here and pull down, it will cut it kind of like a pencil sharpener would cut thread. There's a little blade in there. Please note the distance from the thread cutter to the needle is actually the, the optimum amount of thread tail you should have at the end of every row of stitching to make sure the thread doesn't get sucked back up through the needle when you sew. On the back of your machine, you got this lovely arrow that says, look at the back, because it's not on this picture, is a lever. This metal lever is your presser foot lever or lifter. If you pull it up, the presser foot comes up. If you push it down, the presser foot goes down. Please note, this must go down to sew. When this goes down, your tension disc clamps together on the thread. Your press foot is down holding the fabric steady so that when you sew, you will be able to sew accurately and well. 
on the front of the machine, right above your back stitch and near your needle up and down button, is the machine speed control button or slide. This controls the automatic speeds in the machine, like the bobbin winder, how fast that will wind the thread, or the automatic stitch of your machine. Please note, if you're winding a bobbin, it should be over here on minus. If it's at plus, it's going as fast as it can, and it will actually stretch the thread and potentially break it and cause problems with your bobbin later. Take-up lever. This is probably one of the most important parts of the sewing machine, right here. Kind of hiding behind this metal beak is this metal lever, and there's a hole in the center of it. Your thread must be through that hole when you thread the machine, because this lever, when it's up, it grabs the thread and pulls it down, and it goes down with the needle. And it comes up to grab more thread from the spool and pull it down so that the needle can put it through the fabric and catch the bottom thread. So this moves up and down. It must be right here at the top whenever you start, and your thread needs to come through that hole. Those are the basic parts of the sewing machine. Different machines have different parts. There are things I didn't explain to you guys, but that's because you do not need to use them for my class. Take a higher level sewing class and you will learn more details.